Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I'll show you how to create a virtual machine in Hyper-V for Windows 10. By the end of this video you'll be comfortable with creating virtual machines in your own Hyper-V environment. So let's get started. Before I switch over to my Windows 10 computer and create a virtual machine, let's quickly sum up what we've covered so far. First I showed you how Hyper-V and how hypervisors in general work under the hood. Next we covered the Hyper-V install requirements that have to be met in order to install the Hyper-V feature onto Windows 10. I then performed an actual install of Hyper-V on my Windows 10 professional computer. If you've not yet seen our previous videos covering this content, I strongly recommend that you do. You can go to these videos now by clicking any of the links on the screen. Now that Hyper-V has been installed, we're now able to create our first virtual machine. Remember, a virtual machine is essentially a computer that runs entirely in software. With virtual machines, the administrator is able to create entirely separate computer instances. Each of these instances has their own CPU, RAM, hard disk space and operating system installed. With virtual machines, the administrator is able to run multiple operating system instances side by side on the same physical computer at the same time. Remember, just because virtual machines run completely in software doesn't mean that they're any less of a computer than their physical counterparts. In fact, virtual machines are just as capable of performing the same day-to-day -day tasks as regular physical computers. I'll now change over to my Windows 10 professional computer to show you how to create a virtual machine. From the desktop of my Windows 10 computer, I first need to open Hyper-V Manager. To do this, I'll click Start, and then I will search for Hyper-V. From the search results, I will select Hyper-V Manager. This opens the Hyper-V Management Console. This is where virtual machines are created and managed. At the top of Hyper-V Manager, notice that we have a section named Virtual Machines. When a virtual machine is created, that virtual machine will be listed here. Currently, Hyper-V Manager is reporting that no virtual machines were found on this server. This is because I haven't created any virtual machines yet. In the left pane of Hyper-V Manager, you'll see your Hyper-V host computer. In my case, this is PC1. PC1 is the name of this computer, and so yours is likely to be different. To create a virtual machine on this computer, I'll right-click on PC1, point to New, and will select Virtual Machine. This will launch the new Virtual Machine wizard. This wizard will guide us through the process of creating a virtual machine. The first page of the wizard is the Before You Begin page. This page simply gives the administrator some information on what they're about to do. When you're ready to continue, click the Next button. The second page of the wizard is the Specify Name and Location page. This page allows the administrator to choose a name for the virtual machine to help them identify it. For now, I'll name my virtual machine VM1. Further down the page, the administrator is able to choose where the virtual machine is stored. This is essentially where the virtual machine configuration files will be located. By default, the virtual machine configuration files are kept on the C drive in the Program Data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V directory. If you want to change where the virtual machine configuration files are kept, all you have to do is to tick the checkbox Store the virtual machine in a different location. You can then select your preferred location using the Browse button. For ease of administration, some administrators like to store their virtual machines on a separate partition to make them easier to manage. Personally, I'm a fan of storing my virtual machines on a completely separate hard disk altogether in order to maximise the performance of the virtual machines. Before taping this video, I installed a second hard disk into this computer. If I quickly open Disk Management on this computer, notice that I have two hard disks installed disk 0 and disk 1. Disk 0 is the disk which contains my operating system. Disk 1 is a data drive. 
I'll now close Disk Management and will return to the new Virtual Machine Wizard. Here I'll change the location of my Virtual Machine to the E Drive on this computer since the E Drive is on my second hard disk. With the name and location of the Virtual Machine set, I'll then click the Next button. The next page of the wizard is the Specify Generation page. On this page the administrator is able to choose the generation of virtual machine they want – Generation 1 or Generation 2. Generation 1 virtual machines are the original virtual machines that have existed since Windows Server 2008. As Generation 1 virtual machines have been around for a while, they are compatible with pretty much all versions of Hyper-V. Generation 1 virtual machines also support a good variety of 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems. Generation 2 virtual machines are a new type of virtual machine that offer improved performance and newer features. However, Generation 2 virtual machines offer only limited operating system support. In fact, you can only install Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8 or newer operating systems. Support for 32-bit operating systems has also been dropped. If you are unsure which generation of virtual machine to choose, I would personally suggest that you stick with Generation 1 virtual machines. So I'll select Generation 1 and will click Next. Next we have the Assign Memory page. Here the administrator is able to choose the amount of RAM memory that will be allocated to the virtual machine. For the Startup Memory parameter, you should enter the maximum amount of RAM you'd like the virtual machine to have. In my case I would like to allocate 4 GB of RAM to this virtual machine. So I'll enter a total of 4096 MB. If I were to make no further changes on this page, when the virtual machine starts up, precisely 4 GB of RAM will be taken from the host computer and given to the virtual machine. However, if I was to tick the checkbox, Use dynamic memory for this virtual machine, the virtual machine will only consume the amount of RAM memory that it requires at that specific point in time. That is, when the virtual machine is idle, it will only use a small amount of RAM. However, during busy periods, the virtual machine will increase its RAM requirements up to a maximum of 4 GB. Since dynamic memory is beyond the scope of this lesson, I will leave this feature disabled. This means that when VM1 starts up, 4 GB of RAM in this computer will be given to VM1 and this memory will never be given up by the virtual machine. With the memory of the virtual machine set, I will then click Next to continue. The next page of the wizard is the Configure Networking page. On this page, the administrator needs to decide whether or not they want this virtual machine to participate in a network. If the virtual machine will not be part of a network, then no further action is required. However, if the virtual machine will be part of a network, the administrator will need to create and attach what is called a virtual switch. As you can see, this page of the wizard only allows the administrator to attach a virtual switch to the virtual machine. You can't create a virtual switch from here. Don't worry too much about virtual switches just yet. I'll cover virtual switches in a lot more detail later in the course. At this point, all you need to know is that a virtual switch is required if you want your virtual machine to have network connectivity. For now, I'll leave the connection parameter set to Not Connected and will then click Next. Next, we have the Connect Virtual Hard Disk page. A virtual hard disk is essentially a hard disk for a virtual machine. After the virtual hard disk has been created, the administrator would then install an operating system onto the virtual hard disk. From here, we essentially have three options. The Create a Virtual Hard Disk option allows the administrator to create a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk now and attach it to the virtual machine. The next option, Use an existing virtual hard disk, allows the administrator to attach a virtual hard disk that was created earlier to this virtual machine. The last option, Attach a virtual hard disk later, will essentially skip this page, no virtual hard disk will be created, and the administrator would have to create and attach a virtual hard disk manually later on. Because virtual hard disks will be covered in a lot more detail in a later video, I'll select the 
Attach a virtual hard disk later option and we'll click Next. The last page of the wizard essentially sums up the choices we've made. If I click the Finish button, Hyper-V will create the virtual machine. This should only take a moment or two. Back in Hyper-V Manager, notice that my virtual machine, VM1, has appeared listed under the Virtual Machines section of the console. That's all there is to creating a new virtual machine on Windows 10 using Hyper-V Manager. However, it's also possible to create virtual machines using Windows PowerShell. To complete this video, I'll now delete this virtual machine. We'll open an administrative PowerShell prompt and we'll talk you through how to create a virtual machine using PowerShell. First, I will enter the commandlet new VM, which stands for new virtual machine. Next, I will add the name switch followed by the name of the virtual machine I want to create. In my case, this will be VM1. The next switch I will add is the Memory Startup Bytes switch. Here, the administrator can enter the amount of RAM in megabytes they'd like to allocate to this virtual machine. Since I want to add 4 gigabytes of RAM to this virtual machine, I will enter a value of 4096 megabytes. Next, I will add the Generation switch. This allows the administrator to choose the virtual machine generation. Since I want to create a Generation 1 virtual machine, I will enter a value of 1. The next switch I will add is the No VHD switch. This essentially tells Hyper-V that no virtual hard disk will be created for this virtual machine. Don't worry, in a later video I'll show you how to create a virtual hard disk. The last switch I will add is the Path switch. This switch determines where the virtual machine configuration files will be kept. As I mentioned earlier, I personally like to place my virtual machines on a totally separate hard disk for performance and administration reasons. So I will save this virtual machine into the root of my E drive. I'll then press Enter to run the command. The command will only take a few seconds to run. If I close Windows PowerShell, notice that the virtual machine, VM1, has reappeared in Hyper-V Manager. That covers creating virtual machines in Hyper-V on Windows 10. In the next video, I'll look at how to configure the virtual machines we've just created. This will involve looking at the settings for the virtual machine. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. For more tech tips from Will, check out our YouTube channel. And remember to subscribe to be notified of future videos when they're released. Thanks for watching.